Okay, I'm going to do two more with you, which are slightly more difficult, and that just it's a little bit different answer. So, um, let's graph this function. So I'm going to find the zeros, yeah. So, y equals x raised to the third minus 4x squared minus 5x and then plus 20. Okay, so if I graph that, it looks like it crosses at for sure 1, 2, 3, 4. That's really the only thing that I know for sure. And if I look at my table, then I can see, yeah, it crosses at 4 because at 4, y equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and um, synthetically divide these, the, the 4 out. So I put 1, negative 4, negative 5, and 20. Bring down the 1, multiply and I get positive 4, add negative 0, multiply by 0, negative 0, add negative, negative 5, multiply I get negative 20, add negative 0. Okay, well, so what this is, is if I started with a cubic and I end up with a quadratic. So this is x squared plus 0x minus 5. Well, I want to know when that equals 0, so I set it equal to 0. Okay, well, then I'm going to add 5. And then I'm going to take the square root. And you got to remember that when you take the square root, you have two answers, plus and minus the square root of 5. Which lets me know that my three answers are 4 and then plus and minus the square root of 5. So if I wanted to write this in factor form, then I would say x plus the square root of 5, x minus the square root of 5, and then x minus 4. Okay. Um, just to make sure, if I look at my graph and I go second, calculate, find the 0. Okay, so let's just find this one. So I'm going to go to the left of it, which is above it, to the right of it, which is below it, press enter, enter, and it tells me that the answer is 2.236068. Well, if I go to my home screen and I type in the square root of 5, I get 2.2360, and then it, and it rounds. Okay, so it's the same thing. All right, so last one, let's do this one. So what if I tell you this is the function, and then I want you to find the, all the roots? Well, then um, you need to go to y equals and factor then again. Okay, so x raised to the third. And then plus 13x squared plus 46x plus 30. Okay, and then I'm going to graph it. And it looks like it crosses at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7. That's kind of ugly, but oh well. Oh, let's check our table and make sure. No, negative 5. What can I? Ah! Crosses at negative 5, not negative 7. Even though it looks like it, right? At negative 7, it's 2. At negative 5, it's 0. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and negative 5. So 1, 13, 46, 30. 1 times 1 is, er, <laughs> bring down the 1. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Add negative 8. Multiply negative, negative 40. Add negative 6. Multiply negative, negative 30. And then I get 0. Okay. Now, I started with a cubic. This is a quadratic. 1x squared plus 8x plus 6. Now, it would be nice if this factored, because I need to solve for when this equals 0. But there are not factors of 6 that add up to the middle term 8. 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Didn't work. Okay? So which means I need to use quadratic formula. x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a is 1, b is 8, c is 6. So opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. 64 minus 24 is 40 which I can simplify. There's a perfect square that goes into 40, right? And that's 4 times 10. So if I write this as 4 times 10, well, the square root of 4 is 2, so I've got negative 8 plus or minus 2 root 10 over 2. 8 and 2 both divide by 2. This one is 4, this one is 1, so my final answer is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 10 and negative 5. Okay, so just so you in case you run across some problems where you have to do more than just um, just synthetically divide, sometimes we use synthetic division to find all the zeros of a function. Okay.